Hey, good morning and welcome to Simon Hale. My name is Simon. And this morning I'm just absolutely over the moon, I think is an appropriate expression, seeing as it's full moon. Um, I'm over the full moon to meet for the first time, connect with live uh, Lorraine Ham. Um, Lorraine, I have met through uh, a course that we're both um, attending at the moment. It's an online course um, hosted by Mark Atwood. I've, I've mentioned it before and I've been leaving links to his channel and his course. Um, and I really recommend for everyone to at least, yeah, just have a listen to what it is that he has to offer. I've met some incredible people um, and just including Lorraine, um, and just starting now to um, explore um, creating videos with these, with these beautiful souls that I've met. Um, and just kind of seeing where these conversations that we're recording take us. So, uh, hi, Lorraine, welcome. And um, I don't know, so would you like to introduce yourself any more than that? Well, thank you so much, Simon. I'm thrilled to be here with you and to meet you. Uh, we, you know, we've been communicating just a little bit uh, for, I guess, a couple of months now. And um, it is lovely to put a real live person, although I've been watching your videos and very much enjoying them, um, it, it, to, to talk in person is, well, somewhat in person through this digital world um, is, is a treat. It is a true treat to be able to talk to somebody in Thailand while I'm sitting on the East Coast of the United States, it's, it's miraculous actually. <laughs> and to be able to connect in energy, more importantly. So I, I, I've been getting so much out of your videos, your genuine, gentle approach to sharing really profound knowledge and information to your viewers. And, and honestly, I've been working with the law of attraction and I know you've been doing a few videos lately on the law of attraction. The law of energy and frequency is the law that supersedes the law of attraction. And I've been working with, with those for a, a very long time, but, um, you've been putting it in such a way that it makes it very accessible and easy to comprehend, which I find really lovely. And I've been applying some of your techniques and it's been fantastic. So thank you. Oh, oh amazing. Yeah. Um, I, <clears throat> My channel um, is called Simon Heals because really it's about sharing my healing journey, what I've learned and I'm learning along the way, and also offering myself in my capacity as a healer. And um, if you watch my recent uh, conversation with Alina, you know, we were talking about that neither of us really... Uh, um, resonate with the title of healer, but it's a word that we use to to communicate our role, let's say, you know, and, you know, as we were saying, um, <clears throat> I'm not a healer, I'm a, I'm a facilitator, I hold the space and I, <clears throat> and, I, and, I and guide people through their healing, and that's really kind of based on my healing um, journey, and um, but yeah, I have, I found myself talking about law of attraction a lot. And I totally agree with you. I mean, law of attraction, it's just, I use that name because it's familiar. People will, it will recognize those words. Yeah, but as you say, um, we're talking about the universal laws, the laws of energy. And, and it's about really 
for me, why, I, why I've been finding myself talking a lot about this is because um, I've noticed, I noticed earlier, you know, in my healing journey with myself and, and working with clients that so often we're trying to fix things outside of ourselves, believing that that's going to make us well and it's going to make us happy. And <clears throat> but the truth is that everything that we experience outside of ourselves is really a mirror for mirroring back to us what's going on with it in ourselves mentally and emotionally and um, absolutely right so so that's why the emphasis on that and for me why the understanding of these kind of simple laws of energy um are are so um vital to our to our healing journeys yeah so Lorraine, well, um, well, let's face it. Yeah. I've been doing, I've been doing healing work with clients for well since two thousand, and all of us, I think, that go into healing modalities across the board, go into them because we're trying to heal something within ourselves. It. it it is the driver, it's the impetus that causes us to seek more. And I know that you are a Reiki master teacher. I am as well. Um, Reiki was a fantastic stepping stone along the path. And I use it, I use all of the modalities and I have many in everything that I do it is incorporated and becomes part of the energy and frequency. Reiki energy is one of the most beautiful, loving, I see it as silky blue energy, mm, radiant, said. and it has an essence of silkiness. Right. Um, and, and it's incorporated in everything that I do. So... I don't work with a client that I don't incorporate some aspect of Reiki in my work, no matter what I do. So, um, however, coming back to this idea of law of attraction, we are the manifestors of our reality. You recently did a video on the words that you speak and the spell casting that we do. We are the master creators of the universe we are the we are god in form essence creators creators of worlds and and it's only us that is stopping us from that level of creation so it is it is a critical point in living in these times that we are in to move forward understanding uh, the power that we are uh, absolutely Lorraine and you know <clears throat> people talk often about moving from 3d into 5d and you know using these kind of an ascension um and for me this is very much what it's about I, it's something that's been happening to me in my life that I've <clears throat> I you know I, I grew up believing that if I wanted something in my life I wanted to achieve something or there's something that I wanted to uh, make happen then it, it required work it required effort we live in a world that's competitive we live in a, la a world of lack so you know I think I used an analogy recently in a video of, of musical chairs that game that we play as kids you remember that game yeah, yeah. When I always, hated that game. Yeah, it was so interesting. I made the video last week and then I was invited to a children's birthday party on Sunday and they were playing it and I was like, oh, oh. my God. Yeah, and honestly, <laughs> the stress, that one. the stress that the kids put just playing this game at a birthday party. So, we're, you know, so we're really 
<laughs> so you know, like like most of us, that was really my my kind of paradigm of a mindset. Um, and yeah, I became very successful. I did all the stuff, you know, by by my mid thirties. I'd, I'd, I'd tick just about everything on the list. I had all the stuff and the property and the cars and the experiences and everything, you know. And then, bam, I hit 40. And I, and like, it's like my soul just woke up inside of me. I think he, he'd been there the whole time. Like, and I just wasn't listening. But uh, yeah. I had this huge wake up. So this is like 15, 16 years ago. I had this huge wake up. And often when we talk about kind of waking up and spiritual awakening, it, it sounds lovely. You know, it's like we have, we have these images of sitting under a tree chanting on and stuff like that. It was the most horrendous experience <laughs> of my life. You know, it was tough. It was really tough. But what I want, <clears throat> What I wanted to, um, continuing from what from what you were saying, and we're talking about, uh, you know, the, the 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 spiritual laws and how we are the creators, the master creators of our of the universe and of our own experience. Um, as I as I've kind of moved into this phase of my life, and really. Um, focusing more on on my personal healing journey, on um, working with others in on their healing journeys. Um, that I'm much less invested in myself as a physical being and the way that I interact physically with the world. And it's much more about where are my where are my thoughts, my feelings, and my emotions, and really mastering those, and just being the observer, the witness of how my ex the external experience is constantly reflecting those back to me, and it. And as I become more consciously aware of this as a process, it's moment to moment to moment experience, you know? And we can literally create those quantum shifts within ourselves and then our external experience, you know, by, uh, by, by bringing those thoughts, feelings, and emotions into alignment and into focus and clarity. Uh, so for me, this, this development within myself has very much been part of my personal ascension experience. Now on, on your channel, Lorraine, you, most of your videos have this phrase, symptoms of ascension. So I kind of gather that this topic is close to your heart. So I'd love to hear your take on this and what, you know, what that means to you. Symptoms of ascension. Well, it, interestingly, interestingly enough, it's, I've done several different sorts of series on my channel. Symptoms of ascension right now, because so many people are seeking to understand and to get a grasp of what this last two years have been about. Why have we been subjected to this dramatic shift in everything that we know? Which is bringing up all sorts of dross, um, all the hidden it's not only bringing up all the hidden ugly stuff out in the outer world, it's bringing up all the ugly hidden stuff within us, which is where it's all at anyway. We are literally day by day, moment by moment, altering our frequencies and shifting. And through that dramatic shifting 
we are clearing off the layers of stuff that has dampened down our light, held us down, caused us to doubt ourselves, feel guilt, shame, and pain. And we're upfront and personal with all of this turmoil. And through this, we are People are questioning, people are feeling things they've never felt before, and they're going, what is this? Now, ascension has all these connotations and meanings to it. The general concept of ascension, as you know, is we are elevating in frequency. We are moving from one dimensional reality to another dimensional reality. What most people don't really look at in this ascension process is that all the dimensions exist right here. They aren't, they aren't hierarchical in nature. They're all here. We have had access to them for our entire existence. For instance, Divic, the Divic kingdom, fairies and gnomes and unicorns, all of that, all exist here. I can see them. If I tune my frequency, it's all there. Ghosts and other dimensional beings, all there. They're existing in this exact space. So a symptom of ascension can be as simple as all of a sudden you start seeing things and you think you're being attacked by demons when in fact you have shifted your frequency enough that they now become part of your reality. You are interacting with the field that they exist within and it's all energy and it's all frequency. It's no different than tuning a dial on a radio. So we are tuning our dials, we are shifting. And, and so these symptoms, people want to think that the pain in their back is a symptom of ascension. And it could, it can be, but ascension symptoms are not really physical symptoms. Although we are so powerful that we can make a psycho... Somatic. Thank you. <laughs> we can make it physical by our by our thoughts, by our the way we're interacting with it. So low back pain often means a sense of not feeling supported. How would that translate to an ascension symptom? I am experiencing things that I have no concept of how to grasp it. So I'm not feeling supported. I'm not supporting myself. Therefore, I manifest back pain because I have no other way to interpret this. Yeah. I'm, and then we, we numb ourselves out and we do all sorts of things. So my intention for my Symptoms of Ascension series is really just to sort of break through the standard this is what it is and expand people well my whole channel is about trying to get people to move outside their box and and begin to think differently to change their perceptions to discover more of who they are and who they really are powerful radiant fractals of the divine chosen to be in physical form for the pure enjoyment of the physicalness of it. And then we find ourselves in this last two years, which has been, and I've said this before, one of the greatest gifts humanity has ever been given. Most of humanity won't see it that way because humanity has been trained to victimhood. We were given this gift so that we could be shaken to our core out of our complacency. 
out of our compliance. Out of our compliance. We'll get we'll get on to compliance uh, soon because uh, yeah, that, that video that you made recently on non-compliance was was just so good. But just before we get on to that, um, yeah, just carrying on from what you said. Well, firstly, in terms of what you actually offer on your channel um, and your you know your your goal with the channel is to is to really inspire people and to help help shift people's kind of paradigm in a way i think you do it amazingly lorraine and just talking to you today you have you, your energy is is so infectious and you're so well able to articulate some very difficult concepts sometimes and uh, but i love talking to you because i'm like and every word you say is what I would say as well. We really, we speak the same language. And, you know, it's so, it's so wonderful to, um, to, to connect with uh, someone that I resonate with so well. Um, I just wanted to share with you some <clears throat> on the, on Ascension symptoms. It was, um, I, I, I put out a video a few weeks back and um, one morning I was, I was doing some writing, uh, which is a practice that I've been doing for many years. Um, I, I read a book years ago called um, The Artist's Way. You may have come up with it, yeah? And, I have, yeah. Yeah, and one of the practices- And I remember you mentioning that. Yes. I remember you mentioning that, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just gonna repeat it a, a bit for anyone that didn't listen to that video. Um, so, so from that book, which I came across, I don't know, about 15 years ago, 12, 14 years ago or something, um, you know, one of the practices that, uh, that the author of the book, um, whose name slipped me for the moment, but um, <clears throat> one of the practices that she teaches is to write three pages, not two, not four, but three pages every single morning of just kind of stream of consciousness really um and um so i started doing this practice and you know it's played such a big role in my in my journey in my life is and it still does and what started to happen with this practice some years ago um and i think this is one of my ascension symptoms because around a similar time i started to really connect with angels with the angelic realms and like really see them and communicate with them because i feel that my vibration was starting to get high enough that it was overlapping with their vibration and just i i i, I love the way that you described like tuning the radio you know we think of that we think of um these dimensions being places that exist in in, in different times and space. And, you know, there is only one time and space that is only here and now. Personally, and I, I understand that this might sound controversial, I don't believe in outer space. Not, but I don't think it exists for one moment because everything out there is in here. It's just something that we've created, but we won't go into that. <laughs> we'll save that for another one. But, um, so, and around a similar time to that, I started to get like messages coming through. So I'm doing like the writing every morning and these messages are coming through. And, and I guess it's what you would call kind of channeling. Um, so a few weeks back, um, I, I, I got these messages started to come through about um, these, this, um, what should we call it? This, um, this condition that people have seemed to have been getting for the last couple of years and, and um, many people seem to have been suffering from apparently. Um, and um, the message that I was getting coming through um, which is from my higher self, which my, my higher self, I almost feel a little bit um, 
embarrassed saying this because uh, but it doesn't come from a place of ego but i was i was shown a while ago <clears throat> that my higher self is a, a direct fractal of archangel raphael and i even have a name i have a name for my higher self that was i was i think given. we froze how how's that am i unfrozen have i defrosted yes Okay. <laughs> they were good. <laughs> I've defrosted it. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so, so what I was being um, told in this message is that, for example, I have been going through this healing process for about 15, 16 years. And it's been mental, emotional, spiritual healing. It's been physical healing. I've been detoxing like crazy, you know. I've shed a huge amount of weight. You know, the symptoms in my physical body I've dealt with. So that my physical body now is light. It holds light. I can hold light, you know. I haven't eaten a, a, a piece of dead animal for a very long time. You know, I eat fruit which is light. It's the lightest solid food that we can eat, you know, because it's just a mango is light. That's it, you know. So I'm able to hold light and I have healed so much of my traumas and wounding that as these higher frequencies are coming through, which are really being ramping up the last few years, those that frequency has been rising and rising and rising very rapidly and you and I can feel it and you and I are prepared for it and like you say it's the best years of our lives because it's like bring this on this is amazing it's an amazing experience but if you haven't done that work prior to this you know and you haven't and you're still holding those traumas within you you know and that conditioning and those beliefs the, those, 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 those beliefs that are aligned with the world that we used to live in that is dying at the moment. And, you know, and you've been eating the crap that you've been told you're meant to eat. Then physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you've got such a big, <clears throat> a, a big catching up. Chasm. Yeah. A big chasm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. A, a big to to cross in such a short amount of time. So these these physical symptoms that have been given that have been called a pandemic. I'm this is what I'm being told. Yeah, in this channel, then, are actually the physical symptoms of getting of crossing that chasm, as you call it. And those people that are unable to do that. You know, then, they're going. Yeah, they're going. And it's okay, they'll come back. They'll have another go. You know? There is no yeah. death. There, there is, is no death. There, there is no death. And for and if we're able to to make this transition, to cross this chasm, whether it be painfully as a kind of um, as many people have, have been experiencing the last couple of years, they're having to wake up to so much, they're having to heal so much, so intensely, and they're doing amazing, and my God, I'm just here to, to be with those people and hold this space for them and support them, you know, and I, some very good friends and so many clients that I've come to really kind of love um, are going through this, and that's our role now, you know, because we're in reasonably, we're in good, not really, no, actually, I don't want to say that. I'm in great shape, you know, during this and getting better and better because of that work that we've done before. So, and I know that you have, not because you and I have ever talked about it, but I just feel that I know that you have, you know, because you're in great shape, you know, and the, your vibration is so high and the, the messages that you are putting out are, are of such a, um, an ascended quality and vibration that I, I know that you have. And, I, you know, the, these transmissions that we put out through these videos 
the communication is not just the words that we put out it's the energy that's going through them sometimes the words are secondary sometimes i listen to myself back and i'm like blah, 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 blah. And I, i'm like yeah but um, you know what i mean and i you know like my, my, my vocabulary is not justifying the frequency that's coming out so carlos castaneda's yeah series the series i don't know if you're familiar with yeah. it yeah i mean i'm sure you are yeah um refers to it as the second attention the words are just capturing the mind to get the mind out of the way so the heart can receive the energy right that is the purpose of the words being spoken mm -hmm. to deal with the conscious mind mm -hmm. um to get back to health and wellness my body is not where i would like it to be but i do the best i can i've been on a healing journey i developed really severe asthma and allergies and stuff my story in my early 20s and i have over all those years so 40 years i have been systematically tuning my body, healing my body, working with my body. I'm not perfect. I still, as you know, have kind of a sinus thing going on. But here's what I know about our bodies. I know that we can, in the fraction of a second, heal our bodies com completely. And the reason I know this from a scientist, just to, to help your viewers, maybe understand this from a scientific point of view. There are scientific cases of people with multiple personality disorders. One personality will be totally healthy, no problems. The other personality will have severe illness, diabetes, cancer, documented with tests and everything. When the personality shifts from one personality to the other, you can run all the same tests and they will all be negative if they're in the personality that is perfectly healthy. This proves unequivocally that our bodies are intelligent and our state of dis-ease is a, a, a manifestation of our belief in the disease. I know this for everyone and I know this for myself. The challenge I've had as a person who facilitates other people healing, I have assisted many, many people to heal very dramatic things for the years, the, uh, what is this, for 22 years. I have facilitated. I have been working on myself and I avail myself of people who facilitate healing because I clearly have something within my belief system that is still blocking my healing. Although I am so close to having it shift that I, and I know it's possible. So I am always hopeful and i always when i work with people see them in their state of perfection because we are already perfect so we are already perfect and and this last two years yes it has been very hard for a lot of people and it's going to be very very, very hard for a lot more people. As we move through this year, we are going to see a lot of clients. And that's what we're here for. That's what we've been training for. You and I and those like us have been holding the light. My, I was told 22, 20 years ago in a in a transmission of 
profound and expansive um, information that I received about myself. I was, I, I have been asking since I was very small, why am I here? And why hast thou forsaken me? I felt so forsaken by source to be here in this place because I didn't understand it. I didn't see the beauty and magnificence of this place. The potentiality that we have in physical form, we have no other place to, to actually have this potential. It is in actual physical reality that we as fun-loving creatures of the universe actually have the ability to play out all of our wildest dreams. So here I am, I, I'm dropped here and I'm wondering, you know, and I hear in my head, because I'm very clairaudient, that's my primary or my first um, intuitive gift. I hear, you are the rock. And I'm like, okay, I love rocks. I'm a big fan of rocks. I collect rocks, but I don't understand what you're trying to tell me here. And, and they just kept saying, you are the rock. You are justice. You are holding space. I did not understand that whole concept. And I heard it 20, 20 years before I actually understood it. This last two years, I fully comprehend what it meant. I have been, since this whole crazy started, my whole purpose in being has been to hold the entire planet and the universe steady for all of this to unfold. I was told this was what I, my purpose was. And so I hold this space. I hold the energies and the frequencies. Every morning I have this routine where I'm, I'm always doing global universal uh, energetic work to, to hold as steady as it can be and still accomplish the overall goal of shaking people out of their stupor. And it's not anybody's fault that they're in a stupor. And it's not anybody's fault that, that they've been eating the way they've been eating and that they didn't know because the whole system has been designed to keep everybody very, very small and damped down. So the first thing as facilitators of healing, because we're here, that's our purpose. When all of the people wake up, when they discover that they've been duped, that they are more than they knew they were, we are there to help them cross the bridge, to cross the gap, to understand their potentiality, their magnificence, their perfection, so that they can instantly elevate their frequencies to whatever dimensional frequency level, they want to tune their dial. We are not, we are fractals of the divine. We are unlimited beings. We do not need to stay in 5D if we feel like going to 25 or 14 or wherever. We are all capable of going anywhere we want. We just need to work through our fear and that will go away quickly once the veils have been removed yeah yeah brilliant brilliant everything that you've said there um <clears throat> i so resonate with um yeah i i get a sense that the healing that say you and i and our and our kind of peers have been 
experiencing over the last 10, 20 years and has taken that long. I think people are going to start experiencing that degree of healing in 20 days. You know, mm -hmm. it's really the speed it's of that. Like that. It's like that. And as you say, the potential is there to, to, to make this quantum shift from where we are at in this moment with all the pains and aches in our bodies and the diseases it's, and the conditioning and the beliefs and everything and literally go into that reality like that just take this quantum shift because because we what we experience is being real being in the in the physical world is coming and going from existence like that millions of times a second i can't click my fingers fast enough and every single time it reappears it is responding to us as the consciousness that's observing and creating what that's going to become so all we have that's to right. do is change our minds change our beliefs and the next time that it reappears it reappears as something different now, as, as you were saying for yourself, as a, as a kind of healing facilitator, you are able to see that potential in your clients so that you can hold that new reality for them. And, and this is what we do as, as healers, to use that word, as healing facilitators. You know, this is what Jesus Christ did as well, too. He could, because he had that belief, you know, he had that belief, but he, he said something along the lines of the belief, the size of the grain of a mustard, you say to the mountain, move from here to here, and it will move. If we have that belief, that absolute belief, now, and you and I are able to do that for our clients, but doing it for ourselves is a lot, it can be a lot more challenging, can't it? You know, so, I, please, you want to speak so let me just. Too interject here sorry um i just want to interject as i want people to understand the power of this belief because what we have seen in the last two years is testament to the power of belief everything that has manifested was inserted by the power of belief and on mass, we were made to believe that there was this thing that then manifested because we are the creators. This happens with, this has happened over the last 20 years when they started doing television commercials. Now I haven't watched television for years and years and years, decades, but they started to put um drug commercials on tv and interestingly enough those d diseases for those drugs exponentially increased in the greater field this is what happened over the last two years an idea was introduced and we created it by the power of our belief and by the repetition that we were hearing from the external world. That isn't to say that it's not real on some level, because it's not real for everyone, but it is real for some, and they experience the full extent of it. This can be cured in an instant by the power of our belief. Completely. Completely, absolutely. Um, so I'm I I'm not sure exactly what time we started this, um, and um, I feel I think about eight. I think about eight o'clock. Right. I think okay. we've been going for about thirty-seven okay. minutes. Okay. So um, shall we? Shall we move into some other subjects or continue with this? What would sure. you like to do? Wherever you want to go, okay. Simon. Okay, because um, uh, <clears throat> I think if we keep this to a maximum of, of an hour, I could talk to you forever, Lorraine. I'm just so enjoying this <laughs> conversation. I really am. I, I feel that we're kind of like resonating at such a 
high frequency here. I can just feel that like ping ponging backwards and forwards, you know. And then and then that kind of races and races. And this is what this is what it's about. This is what we all need to be looking for now. You know, one of the one of the important things that I teach people is look at every aspect of your life, look at your relationships, look at the food you eat, look at the media that you engage with, look at the place that you live, look at the internal environment of your home, Every look at everything. And just ask yourself that question, is it raising my vibration? Is it lowering my vibration? If it's lowering, change it, get rid of it, cut it, non-negotiable, you know? We've got to do this, you know? And, and where things are feeling good, spend more time with that do more of it you know if it's let's say whether it's relationships whether it's food etc et so and this is this is what i do now constantly i'm con it's constantly refining constantly um improving that that life experience so that i just feel better and better and better and and then I am able to be of better service to others. We've so much been brought up to believe in self-sacrificing. We value self-sacrificing, yeah? And we believe that someone that puts themselves first, their own needs first, is selfish. And bad, yeah. selfish yeah. people are bad people. And no one likes selfish people, you know, and like so much in our in our kind of uh, reality, it's such an inversion, you know, because I, I, I find that so many of the um, clients that I work with are in this kind of self sacrificing mode, you know, because they believe that that makes them a good person, you know, and um, and they end well, up but under, underneath, often underneath the overdoing mm -hmm. or the over sacrificing is the belief that in order to be good or worthy, they have to keep doing that. It, it in it in and of itself, it's it's the thought that if I'm good enough, I'll be loved. So people overdo from a selfish perspective, if you look at it from a bigger, broader perspective, because they desperately want to be loved. I uh, was one of those people. That's so, no, you're absolutely <clears throat> spot on with that. And isn't that what's happening in the collective? The collective keeps thinking, if we behave ourselves and we do what our parents, which is the governments and the institutions, etc., tell us, then, then they'll love us. Then we'll get it right, right and everything will be good. And, and it's like this really unhealthy codependent relationship with a narcissist, where the yes. more you try to please that person, the more evil that person becomes, the more demanding that person becomes. And that's what that's what's happening now. And actually, whilst we're talking about that, just kind of going back to what we we're talking about a little bit earlier, this this way that everything outside of ourselves is a reflection of the inner. Um, isn't and how you know like if i think back to when i went through my real kind of awakening process 15 16 years ago and my my life out there was kind of such a mess and then i went through this very painful awakening process and now i live you know just the most beautiful life that's what's happening co collectively. And all of that out there that people are experiencing, all those bad people, you know, all the all the the bad players in the movie of our lives, whether it be in the governments, in the institutions, you know, and and there are certain characters that are playing those roles for us, you know, that we all know of. We've created them all. 
they're all just manifestations of our collective disease. And as we they heal, are. then they go away. They go away. And this is how, just as I have on an individual level, come I kind of moved from the hell that I was in to the heaven that I live in now. This is what will happen. And it is, it will happen because you and I and so many lifers are holding that vision and holding that light and we can see it we're living it already you know and um I, yeah i tell i tell my viewers all the time that the level of compassion and love that we need to hold for ourselves and humanity is not always an easy thing. But when you surrender to your true nature, your divine nature, when you recognize that you're a fractal of divine of the divine and everyone else is too, they're all playing a role that we have projected them into by our collective agreement. It it broadens our ability to, you know, we live on multiple different levels. I can live in this big, broad picture world. And I live there often. I, this last couple of years has, as you said, our frequencies have elevated. And even those of us that have been doing work for a long time, we are finding ourselves thrust into areas that we never found ourselves in before. I have surrendered more deeply. I have left behind my ego investment in pretty much anything. I, I appreciate and I acknowledge and I love life. I wake up in a state of you know, there are days, some days aren't as good as other days, but the, the overall essence of my life is that I am living a truly blessed life. This last two years has been quite amazing and illuminating. And, and life can be that way for everyone when they allow themselves to get beyond their fear. Everybody is making decisions based on fear. Am I lovable? Am I enough? Am I, you know, those are the two primary ones, enough and lovable, yeah. enough and lovable. Yeah. And because as infants, we made the decision that comfort was good and pain was bad. So if it was painful, we were bad, something was wrong. If, it, if we were comfortable, everything was good. Life doesn't revolve around us forever. It does when we're infants, hopefully. But, you know, we make these decisions based on limited information and limited knowledge, and they become the operating system for the rest of our lives. A lot of the work I do with people is to help them find out the operating system and remove it. Um, because these primal decisions block our ability to see the truth. We cannot see beyond them. They are like cement walls. And that's what this two years has been. It has, it has literally shaken people to their core to get them out of these primal decisions to reframe everything they thought was real. And we are going to discover that everything we thought we knew is not real. We are going to have to, all of us, light workers, star seeds, and everyday folks are going to be shoved into a space of reality that we have no concept of. And it is coming so quickly and so rapidly that we are going to be you know, blown out of the water, as it were. But it's the best thing that 
can happen to us as consciousnesses, as essences of the divine to experience more and to come back to our truth, our divine uh, nature. Absolutely. And it's so exciting. And it, it's, for me, it's exciting because I have such a intimate connection with source that I'm in complete trust. Yeah. And a word that you used just now talking <clears throat> is surrender. And you were saying how over the last few years you've had to surrender deeper and deeper into this process. And I can I can so relate to that. Me too. There's been times when I, I just like, okay, I have absolutely no idea how to deal with what I'm experiencing right now. And I think where so many people are, are suffering is they're still trying to stay in control, you know, and keep things the way they are. And the more things are changing, the harder that becomes. Um, um, are you familiar with um, cymatics? Yes. Cymatics. So um, I'd love to do some fancy share screen stuff now, but I don't know how to do that. But um, for anyone, anyone that's listening, I'll put some links below to, to a couple of videos that relate to this. But if you've, if you've ever looked at a, a kind of cymatic experiment where, for example, um, um, a powder like sand or something like that is placed on, on, a, on a metal plate and it's exposed to sound, which is vibration, and it will start to, this random pile of powder will start to create a shape, often a geometric shape. And then when the frequency is changed to a higher frequency, it will, that, that structure that it's in will break down and then it will become something even more beautiful and more, more intricate. But there is a moment when one frequency finishes and the next frequency changes, where the powder goes back into kind of disarray, into lack of structure. That's where we're at now. One frequency is finished, another frequency is just starting up. And we're in that moment where everything is collapsing. So all the, all the structures um, that we've experienced and our, the way that we live within those structures, they're a cymatic consequence of the old vibration. And our bodies were a cymatic consequence of the, those vibrations that we are living in. And now that we're living and moving, well, we're moving into these higher frequencies, all those structures, societal structures, etc. Every, everything is starting to take a new shape that resonates with this higher frequency. Our bodies, our way of everything that we know is, and I think but using my language, that is where we're moving into. And as you say, it, this is going to be so different than anything that we've ever known. And it's going to make that that we were experiencing so obsolete and it's just incredibly exciting but uh, yeah right at the moment it's uh, it's it's challenging and um i lorraine i'm so enjoying this conversation and I, <clears throat> I and i love listening to you and i know that you've got so much more to say on this i'm looking at the clock and i'm thinking that maybe we could just kind of round this off a little bit um, which I'd like to invite you to do, um, if you would. All right. Um, and um, yeah, how can we round this off now? I would say to the listeners watching, be kind to yourself, be gentle, recognize that everything is shifting. You have no control over this. Nobody has, not a single person, even the people that you perceive to have control, have no control over this. This is happening 
because we as a collective body of energy have chosen this to happen. This is happening. Everything is shifting. The world as you knew it will not exist in a very short period of time. However, what is coming is so beyond beautiful, beyond anything that you could even imagine as good for yourself. Life is changing in dramatic, radical, and really fantastic ways. Be gentle, be kind, be kind to one another. Don't do any infighting. Don't do division. It All it will create is pain and strife. Recognize everyone. When you look in their eyes, the words um, namaste really means that I see the divine in you. The divine that is in me is in you. And when we look at another human being, no matter where they are on the spectrum of belief with you, they are the divine. Surrender to the joy of the moment. Do what is in front of you. Don't worry about your future and don't worry about your fat past. Love the people that you are near and just let it all happen. Thank you, Lorraine. I'm not even going to attempt to add anything to that because that was perfect and complete. So, Lorraine, um, you have um, the channel on YouTube, so I will add a link to that channel below. Um, I really encourage um, everyone to check out um, Lorraine's channel. There's some just amazing messages and such uh, such wisdom to be found on there. Um, you're also available for healing work, I gather. Yeah, so you can do I that. Am. You do that both in person and remotely. I don't do that in person because of where I live. I live in a very rural part of the state of Virginia in the United States. I do it all through uh, Zoom or online, however the client needs it. Some of the things that I do can be done remotely. So it just sort of depends on what the client needs, what the client wants, and how I can be of service. Excellent. And um, so what's the best way for people to, to reach you? Is it at your email address that you've got there on the screen? Or... <clears throat> yes, that's, that yeah. is. The, okay. the link... I think you'll be sharing the link that I put my link tree link Everything, down well, in the in the yeah. video. Anything that you would like me to share, I will share. Um, and um, yeah, people can email me. Yeah. They can they can check out all the links on my link tree link. Um, and wonderful, just contact me. I'm, I'm happy to work it out. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I will definitely be contacting you um, for, for a session. Um, and um, thank you again so much. I mean, it's just been such a pleasure and um, really enlightening. And um, for me, it's morning here for you, it's evening, but I, I, I could hardly have thought of a better way to start my day. Um, my vibration is so high right now. So thank you so much. And, uh, you know, thank you for, for listening to us and sharing this space with us. And uh, namaste. Namaste.